single, okay? But I'm not here to talk about uh, music today. I'm here to talk about books, okay? In particular, textbooks and the kind of educational materials that, that we use every day uh, in school. Has anyone here ever been to school? <laughs> okay? Does anybody uh, realize there's a crisis in our schools around the world, okay? I hope, I hope, okay, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But what I want to talk about is some of the disconnects that, that appear when an author publishes a book that in fact the publishing process, just because of the fact that it's complicated, it's heavy, books are expensive, creates a sort of a wall between authors of books and the ultimate users of books, be they teachers, students, uh, or, or just general readers, okay? And this is even more true if you happen to speak a language other than one of the world's major languages, and, and especially English. And I'm gonna call these people below the barrier shutouts because they're really shut out of the process of being able to share their knowledge with the world. And so what I want to talk about today is trying to take these ideas, right, that we've seen in the musical culture and try to bring these towards reinventing the way we think about writing books, using them, and, and teaching from them, okay? So that's, that's what I'd like to talk about and really how do we get from where we are now to, to where we need to go. So the first thing I'd like you to do is a little thought experiment. So imagine taking all the world's books, okay, everybody imagine books, and imagine just tearing out the pages. So liberating these pages, and imagine digitizing them, right? And then storing them in a vast, interconnected, global repository. Think of it as a massive iTunes, right, for, for, for book-type content, okay? And then take that material and imagine making it all open so that people can modify it, play with it, improve it. Imagine making it free so that anyone in the world can have access to all of this knowledge. And imagine using information technology so that you can update this content, improve it, play with it on a time scale that's more on the order of seconds instead of years, okay? Instead of the editions coming out every two years of a book, imagine it coming out every 25 seconds, okay? So imagine we could do that, and imagine we could put people into this, right? So that we can truly build an ecosystem with not just authors, but all the people who could be or want to be authors in all the different languages of the world. And I think if you could do this, it would be called well, I'm just going to refer to it as a knowledge ecosystem, okay? So really, this is the dream, uh, and in a sense, what you can think of it is we're trying to enable anyone in the world, I mean anyone in the world, <laughs> to be their own educational DJ, creating educational materials, sharing them with the world, constantly innovating on them. Okay, so this is the dream. In fact, this dream is actually being realized, right? Over the last six and a half years, uh, we've been working really hard at uh, Rice University in a project called Connections. And so what I'd like to do for the rest of the talk is just tell you a little bit about what people are doing with Connections, which you can kind of think of as the counterpoint to Nicholas Negroponte's talk yesterday where they're working on the, the hardware of bringing education to the world. We're working on the open source tools and the content, okay? So that's sort of to put it in perspective here, okay.